One of the things I liked doing with my classes when we had face-to-face -face classes was to play little board games. Part of the reason was that it just added a little bit of fun to it, added some practice to it. Um, it got students talking with one another, especially in a language classroom that's really important. And so I would do things like, in the past, I used to have print off a little game board, and then I would have little cards that they could flip over and roll of dice and that type of thing. That's all great, and as I've gone through the years, I've changed it slightly. Instead of cutting up little cards, I've used Quizlet sets to be able to have them so they can pull up on their phones, and they can use a Quizlet set for their cards instead. And I've done a whole video on how I use a paper board game together with a Quizlet set so I can then change up that board game, that blank board game, to be whatever I want. And I'll just show you a blank board game I normally use. This is it here. Um, I can, I'll be sharing this in the... Uh, in the description area. You can download this and use it if you want. There is a whole video on how to do it, but a real quick idea is that you have a telephone to phone a friend so they can ask someone else outside of their group. They can, um, or within their group if they want, um, they have to wait a turn for the hourglass. They have to switch places with someone else on the board when they land here. And they have to answer two questions for this one here. So just something to mix things up a little bit. Otherwise they just land on a spot they flip over a card and they answer the question or whatever that is that we're doing. Now, since moving online, it's a little tricky because I wanted to do some board game type of thing with them, but it was always tricky to have things like, how do you have them roll the dice? Where do you have the board game posted? How do they move little playing pieces and all that type of stuff? So I'm going to show you what I've come up with, uh, with a combination of, because I use OneNote, so I'm going to show you with my class notebook how this could work. Um, using a OneNote page, using some Quizlet cards, Quizlet dice, and the board game, and then stickers for the playing pieces. So let me just show you how this is all going to work. So first off, let's start off with the dice. Dice was a tricky one for me because I was trying to figure out a way of doing this, and then I realized, why don't I just use Quizlet? I've been using Quizlet for this all this time. So I created a flashcard set where it has two numbers. It's a two dice one. The reason why I put it as two dice is that way you can do things I've also in the past done where whenever they get doubles, they have to answer two questions or maybe they get a bonus out of it so maybe they get to do a different type of question when it's uh, two fours or two threes or something like that so you get two different card sets by breaking up the dice into two different dice then or two different die then you can have it um, easier for playing different types of games I'm going to post a link to this Quizlet set so you can absolutely use it if you want to do that and I've put it as randomized so that when you click on it it'll randomize what comes up and so then the students can have a chance to uh, play around with that. Um, what I did with that is I created a set of the matching from one, one and one to six and six, and I did that four times. So there's lots of, there's 84 here, so they should be able to use enough of that. If they have to start again, they can start again. So how do I get this first off to OneNote? Well, that's the beauty of OneNote is you don't really have to do much work with it. Uh, let me just show you the page here. So here it is embedded in the OneNote page. How did I do that? If you haven't done this before, it's a fantastic thing that OneNote will do for you, is that is you can embed a Quizlet set directly into a OneNote page. So here it is right here. Students can then just click on the arrows and get their, they always choose right in this case, to get it. And even if they flip over the set, it's exactly the same thing on the other side. So how did I do this? Well, I'm going to show you by using another card set which would be the cards themselves for questions so in this particular case I'm using a card set where my students were doing review of vocabulary they've been learning and I did questions using those words in the question itself um, and so then that way they'd have to answer the question using the word uh, they'd have to understand the word obviously and then answer the question so let's just go to that one here so here is the set here. So now I need to embed that into my OneNote page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here. I have this here. I'm just going to go down to the share button here and I'm going to copy the link. That's literally all I have to do here. I'm going to go back here. Now my suggestion is always leave a space between things. I always find that if I need to go back and fix something afterwards that space makes a lot, a lot easier here. So I'm going to paste it and the trick to making this work embed is just literally hit the space bar afterwards. That's it. It'll automatically embed. Now you'll notice in this one here there's no link. This one here has a link. I don't the link is great for when students have a problem where they could click on it, open up the Quizlet set. 
in another tab or something like that but I actually like to get rid of those in these situations. So I'm gonna delete that. So I just have the set here. So now I have the two sets. I have the die, I have the question cards, and all they have to do is literally, if they wanna flip over to see what the word was, the word was decide, here is the question that they have to answer um, in order to do that. All right, so we've got our die, we have our card set, now we need our game board. So once again, I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna leave a little extra space. I leave, usually leave two or three in this case because what's going to happen is I'm going to insert and do a file printout, and then I'm gonna remove the document so it just leaves the image. So for those who don't know, a file printout in OneNote not only uploads the document, but it takes an image of each, it makes an image out of each of the pages and puts those in the page as well. That's really handy uh, because there's lots of other things you can do with that. So, um, and I have some videos on that about how you can do it for annotation and stuff. But I'm just gonna go in here. I've already downloaded this PDF. You're welcome to come and download that as well. And I'm just gonna go into insert, file, file printout. Now I'm gonna choose my file and I'm gonna choose my blank board game. I'm gonna wait until it says, cause it still says no file chosen, just wait a little bit it'll eventually go to whatever the name is, so blank board game, hit insert, and it should create an image of that right here. Perfect. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the, this one here because it's unnecessary, I'm gonna delete it. But I'm gonna still leave that space, again, because I just need that space just in case I need to add anything or whatever. Great. Now, I want to also have them use little stickers to move around, so I'm gonna I'm gonna have my students, or they can do it for them, click anywhere beside the board game and click on stickers. And then they can choose a sticker. Oh, let's choose a koala. So I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna add the sticker here. And I'm gonna close off the stickers. Now they could continue doing that. I'm gonna just resize this just so it's a little bit smaller here. But now I can actually move around my sticker. So I'm gonna go back here and I can move around my sticker to where I want it to be by clicking the top bar and moving it to the spot where I want it. All right, so it's in, um, we're not quite at the start. We can move them to the start here, there we go. And everybody could do that. They could go in and move their pieces to where they want to be. And then as we roll the die, so let's go back up here. All right, seven. Now this might be too much for this board game because there's not enough to do that, but I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, done. Okay, so now I've moved my piece to the spot and I'm gonna flip my card over and answer my question. So that's the basics in regards to, you can create your own board games, put them up there. You're welcome to use the die set I have. Um, my suggestion is be creative with some of the cards that you have. There's all sorts of things you can do where you can even have two students have to uh, compete against each other or whatever for each time that goes through. That is the basics. That is how you can create a simple kind of board game using OneNote. The last thing I want to mention about this is where do you put this? So you want to make sure it's in the collaboration space. Now you're going to create one board game thing for each group that's going to meet. So you could have board game one, board game two, or group one, group two, group three, or whatever that type of thing. And so that, that way they can do it. The reason why is because in the collaboration space, uh, then they're going to be able to do things like add the stickers, move the stickers around, that type of thing, whereas they can't do that in the content area. And if it's in their own personal area, no one else can see it, they just see themselves. So in, if you put them in a breakout room, um, you could have one person go into the content, in collaboration space, sorry, and go in and choose the board game. And then they could be the person that does everything for everybody or everybody could open it up on their own computer and play the game because it will synchronize. So there you go. That's how you can play a board game using OneNote, a class notebook.